This is Terry McAuliffe, the former chair of the Democratic National Committee and the former governor of Virginia. In 2021, McAuliffe ran for a second term as governor. McAuliffe's Republican opponent was Glenn Youngkin, a former CEO of a private equity group and personally worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And most notably, Youngkin had zero political experience. Now remember that Virginia is considered a blue state. In the 2020 election, Joe Biden beat Donald Trump by a 10 point margin. All things considered, it should have been a cakewalk for Terry McAuliffe. And having already served as governor and being a Clinton era powerhouse in the Democratic Party, it was McAuliffe's race to lose. So let's jump to September 17th, 2021, the day of the first gubernatorial debate. Here's Glenn Youngkin talking about vaccines. But let me just start with my position on vaccines. Uh, I have been a strong, strong advocate for everyone to get the vaccine. I do believe that individuals should be allowed to make that decision on their own. But that's why I launched a public service announcement to encourage people to get the vaccine. I think what we need to do right now is make sure that everyone in Virginia understands that getting the vaccine is the most important thing we can do. So Youngkin is pro-vaccine and anti-mandate. So it couldn't be any clearer, but here's Terry McAuliffe's response. I have been very strong in this from day one, and Glenn and I differ on this issue. His anti-vax, what he has said, he's had rhetoric out there. So when you say that you're a strong advocate for the vaccine and you encourage people to take it, that's anti-vaccine rhetoric. Got it. He told college students, if you don't want to take the vaccine, just fill out an exemption. You know, I think that's life-threatening, and I think that's disqualifying as governor. You know what should actually be disqualifying? <laughs> Being a slimy liar. I'm Glenn Youngkin, candidate for governor. I'm a business guy who loves numbers. And the numbers show COVID vaccines save lives. That's why I chose to get the vaccine. It's your right to make your own choice, and I respect that. I do hope you'll choose to join me in getting the vaccine. Did you see it? Did you see the anti-vaccine rhetoric? Wow, what a monster. I'm showing leadership. I'm not doing PSAs. Thank you. I'm telling you, let's Thank get you. everybody Thank vaccinated. Thank you, Mr. McAuliffe. Except making that PSA is showing leadership. And my McAuliffe, not giving Yunkin even an ounce of credit, just shows that when it comes to the Democrats, COVID is purely political. I support the vaccine. I stand up for the vaccine. Mr. Youngkin, but I your time is up. Individuals yeah. ability we want to, to go on to the decision. next topic, but, but, but I do want to give, I do want to give Mr. Kula 15 seconds mandates. to respond. So we just should all understand where we are. It's all fluff words. PSAs. Who cares about a PSA? Half the people wouldn't even know who you are on TV. So first, McAuliffe straight up lies about where Youngkin stands on vaccine policy. Then, McAuliffe calls Youngkin a nobody who is wasting his time making fluff word PSAs about the vaccine. <laughs> Great job, jerk. So the day of the debate, McAuliffe's polling average was 5.4 points ahead of Youngkin. Within days after the debate, McAuliffe's lead slipped from 5.4 to 2.8. Now, as you may know, one of the hot button issues in the Virginia election was education, with parents voicing their concerns to local school boards about what was being taught to their children. Some Virginia school boards were pushing back and refusing to talk about certain policies or straight up lying about them. What we've seen over the course of the last 20 months is our school systems refusing to engage with parents. In fact, in Fairfax County this past week, we watched parents so upset because there was such explicit, sexually explicit material in the library they had never seen. It was shocking. Youngkin is referring to an event where parents were upset that there were what they felt were very inappropriate books found in their child's school library. And in fact, you vetoed the bill that would have informed parents that they were there. So Youngkin is in fact wrong here. In 2016 and 2017, Governor McAuliffe vetoed two bills that would have allowed parents to opt their children out of requiring to read books in the classroom that contain sexual material. One of the books at the center of this debate was Toni Morrison's Beloved. And all I'm going to say about it is that if you're a parent who is concerned about your child reading it, you're probably a good parent. These bills, which received bipartisan support, by the way, 
were vetoed in 2016 and 2017 by then-Governor McAuliffe. So Yunkin got the details of the vetoed bills wrong, and McAuliffe rightly used the moment to attack. So first of all, this shows how clueless Glenn Youngkin is. He doesn't understand what the laws were because he's never been involved here in helping Virginia. Attacking his political inexperience is not only fair, but it's a solid tactic. Good so far. But it was not. It, the parents had to write to veto bills, veto books, Glenn, not to be knowledge about it. And he blew it because McAuliffe also got the details of the bills wrong. The bills that he vetoed would have obligated teachers to make copies of required reading lists available to parents so that they could opt their children out of certain type of content. You vetoed it. So, to yeah, I parents, you stopped it. the bill that I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. And there it is. That single statement not only turned out to be the defining moment of McAuliffe's campaign, but it was also the most consequential of the election. Nothing is more important than my children's education. So when I heard about Glenn Youngkin wanting to ban books by prominent black authors, it scared me. Here in Virginia, Youngkin, um, he's campaigning on banning books. Ugh. As I explained, Youngkin isn't banning books. What he was referring to at the debate was the fact that there are books in some school libraries that contain explicit content. And what he was suggesting is that parents have the right to know about the existence of those books. Nothing is more important than my children's education. First of all, how is Toni Morrison's beloved in any way vital to a child's education? It's a work of fiction. <laughs> Second, there is nothing stopping this concerned parent from purchasing whatever book they see fit for their child or borrowing one from a local library. But more importantly, what the ad was saying is that parents should be allowed to have a say in their child's education. So great job, Terry. Banning books written by a preeminent African-American woman who is a Nobel Prize winner. Think about that. So even though parents were concerned about the book's content, and not the author's skin color, McAuliffe is playing the race card in an attempt to paint Yunkin and his supporters as racists. So during McAuliffe's interview with Joy Reid, the topic shifted to critical race theory. And as you mentioned correctly, we don't teach critical race theory. It's never been taught in Virginia. So technically, McAuliffe is correct by saying that critical race theory is not a subject being taught in Virginia schools. You know, like, Critical Race Theory 101. However, parents were expressing concerns that subject matter is being delivered through the lens of critical race theory. Because, for example, the Loudoun County School District spent $34,000 on critical race theory coaching for administrators. And the Fairfax County School District spent $20,000 for a one-hour virtual presentation from Ibram X. Kendi who is one of CRT's biggest advocates. So parents had every right to be concerned, but instead of McAuliffe addressing the issue in a respectful way, he said that it was all in their minds. This is a made up racist dog whistle that really Glenn Youngkin has used from day one, and it, it really sickens me. So if it's made up and not being taught in schools, then it should be easy for McAuliffe to denounce it, right? What's Glenn Youngkin's education plan? He wants to ban critical race theory. Well, let me explain to you. It's never been taught in Virginia. Yeah. So again, if it's made up, then all McAuliffe needed to do was say, it has never been, nor will it ever be taught in our schools, and then disavow it. But he didn't say that because he doesn't actually believe that. We don't have time to be wasting on these phony, trumped up culture wars. This fake outrage that the right-wing media peddles to juice their ratings. So to be clear, Barack Obama is telling voters and parents across the country that their concerns are fake. So do you think that's going to put their mind at ease? Or they're going to be insulted and get even more motivated to vote for the candidate who is addressing their concerns? Spoiler alert, it's the latter. Because even after Obama rallied for McAuliffe, 
Late October polls showed McAuliffe and Youngkin in a statistical dead heat. So what did Democrats do to stop the bleeding? They brought in Brandon. I ran against Donald Trump. Terry is running against an acolyte of Donald Trump. He doesn't want to talk about Trump anymore. Well, I do. Former President Trump's Donald Trump, 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 Trump. He embraced Donald Trump. Donald Trump? So, how did McAuliffe close out his campaign? Well, in a very tone-deaf move, he brought in the president of the American Federation of Teachers, Randy Weingarten, who coincidentally is all in for critical race theory. And what's happening right now is a bunch of misinformation. If it was in my classroom, I'm a social studies teacher, I'd give this misinformation an F. That's ironic because most of the misinformation has come from Terry McAuliffe, but whatever. We gotta bring people together, not do what Youngkin is doing of pulling people apart. So Weingarten is saying that we need to bring people together and that Youngkin is being divisive. However, I would like to present this closing statement by Terry McAuliffe. And I promise you, we've got to diversify our teacher base here in Virginia. 50% of the students at Virginia schools, K-12, 50% are students of color, and yet 80% of the teachers are white. We all know what we have to do in a school to make everybody feel comfortable in school. So election night came, and it was a bloodbath. In a state where Joe Biden beat Trump by 10 points, Glenn Youngkin received more than 50% of the vote. Thanks, Obama! Not only that, but Virginia voted for a Republican lieutenant governor, a Republican attorney general, and voted for enough Republicans to take away the Democrats' control of the House of Delegates. Overall, I'd say it was a great night for Republicans and a big win for common sense. And now I would like to end it with some wisdom from our current vice president, Kamala Harris. What happens in Virginia will in large part determine what happens in 2022, 2024, and on. And on that surprisingly very positive note, that's it for now. Don't forget to pick up some Let's Go Brandon merch while it's still legal, and be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. Thanks for Poofy for her help with this week's script, and as always, I hope to see you next time. If there is next time. <laughs>